praise the Lord. Is anybody grateful this morning? Is anybody in the house grateful this morning? Does anybody have anything to be grateful for? I know that I do because every time I needed the Lord, he showed up and provided. He showed up and provided every time I needed him. Does anybody need the Lord this morning and he showed up for you and you're grateful for him? Go ahead and lift your hands and praise him. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, 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 because I needed him and he showed up. I've needed him and he showed up. I've needed him every time and he showed up. Even when I didn't think I needed him, I've needed him and he showed up. So I'm so grateful. And I say, I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you. Come on, somebody. The oh, I need thee. Praise him with me this morning. Every hour, I need thee. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on and praise him. Praise him. intervene into this place dear Lord we thank you for what you have done in our lives dear Lord we thank you for what you have done dear Lord and we thank you for what you are doing and what you will do dear Lord we need you so we look to the hills from which cometh our help Lord knowing that all of our help comes from you dear Lord you stepped in and grabbed us dear Lord when we didn't know where our help was coming from dear Lord and you brought us through to see another new year dear Lord and somebody this morning needs you right now Lord somebody needs deliverance right now Lord somebody needs healing right now dear Lord somebody is carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders dear Lord and they need you right now Lord we just thank you Lord so I ask that you hide me behind the cross dear Lord that I may bring forth a word that is pleasing in your sight dear Lord and that somebody may come running and say I want to know more about who this Lord is that you serve dear Lord we thank you and we lift you up and we just pray that you will bless this service right now dear Lord and be in our presence these blessings in your name we ask amen hallelujah 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 I just first want to uh, recognize our pastor our shepherd a man that is a mentor a man that has meant so much to me and also um, our first lady he, he, he was talking about that little bump that I gave him uh, there on the basketball court but that 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 bump that that meant something but now we're on the on the golf course uh, playing and he's been my partner I've been his partner and I will never have another golf partner there's been some times where we were down four or five holes going into the turn, but let me tell you, we didn't give up. And uh, after 18, I won't say who we were playing, but um, 
we, we, we handled our business. So to our deacons, our deaconess, our trustees, our ushers, and all of God's heavenly children, I thank you for allowing me to stand here before you this morning and share a word. And I just want you to know that I don't take this opportunity lightly by any means. God has been doing a tremendous work. And I ask that you do one thing, and I ask that you do one thing only, and that is just pray for me. Just pray for me. Pray for this place. And if you do that, God will take care of the rest. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Just keep praying. Keep praying. You can never pray enough. So, um, Also, I have to recognize my family who came from um, out of town and who flew in to celebrate um, a special occasion yesterday, which was my mother's birthday. And I just want to say, from me, I want to tell you specifically, happy birthday. I'm not going to go on too long, but this is one of your birthday gifts from your son. This is, this is one of your birthday gifts, so, so happy birthday, happy birthday. Um, if you would stand with me and open your Bibles, I know a lot of things are, are, are digital, so it won't take us long to get there, but if you will turn with me to Exodus, 313 so that we can have hear what the Lord has to say Exodus 313 it reads Moses said to God suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them the God of your fathers has sent me to you and they ask me what is his name then what shall I tell them God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. As we take our seats, the title for the message today is, Do you know who I am? 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 It may be one of the most important questions that we were asked as we travel this journey, not only through life, but um, on to where um, God has wanted us to be. Um, I grew up in a place and in an environment that was unique with people around me that are the result of where I am today. There's so many people, but I would say that that is my two parents and my two brothers. Before I say this, I'm not ashamed to say um, because they're both amazing people, but I grew up where I didn't know if I was more intimidated by my mom or by my dad. I say that because my mom, she was the queen of the house, and amongst four men, she ruled with an iron fist. I know it's your birthday and all, but I'm going to talk about you a little bit. She didn't take any stuff, and if you've been around my mom, one thing that she will let be known is that regardless of 6'3", 245 linebacker, regardless of 6'6", 240 tight end, and regardless of a 6'1", 285 pound defensive tackle, she will put her sons in a headlock. However, I mean, and I tell you, that headlock, that headlock is something else. It, 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 it's vicious, and when she gets a hold of you, I don't know if there's any getting out. But, however, my father, the six-foot, five-inch man that he is, he was the enforcer. When me and my brothers decided to cut up and carry on with the babysitter while my parents were away, when they returned, he was the one that with determination, he delivered discipline. There would be times where we would be told to do something and sitting there we would still be carrying on with our own agenda and the clock would start ticking and the following was, when I tell you to do something, that means right now. And better yet, we would venture out into the deep ravaging and dangerous waters of the unknown and we would ask the question, why? That's a dangerous question. If you grew up in the household that I grew up in, you ask the question, why? That's dangerous. The reason um, that came from my father every time, um, it, and it was so consistent, was the response of, because I am your father and I said so. Looking back on it, it didn't make much sense, but that was all it took, I am. Fathers, they know best, and when your father said something, that meant that it was final. His response was, because I am. And here Moses is asking a question, and God's response is, because 
I am. We start in Exodus 3 with God coming to Moses and Moses is tending sheep for his father-in-law when he sees a miraculous sight. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a burning bush, which is on fire, but not burn up. From this fire, God speaks to Moses. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of a land into a good and spacious place. And God sees this. He recognizes this. And he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious place, a land flowing with milk and honey. So although Hebrew DNA, Moses, he grew up an Egyptian prince until one day after Moses had reached an adulthood, I got to set the story for you until Moses, he reached adulthood, he killed an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew. So Moses, in order to escape the Pharaoh's death penalty, fled to Midian. Midian was a desert country south of Judah. So here, Moses, he was in a different location. He was in a foreign place. And like the old folks used to say, Moses, he was, he was eating high on the hog and he was rolling in high cotton. He was rolling with the best of them. But here, Moses, he was in a different place and he found himself, he was in the desert as he fled. So as I get ready to make my first point this morning, I want us to take a look for a second on the place specifically where God speaks to Moses. God is speaking to Moses and appointing him as the leader of the nation of Israel, a nation that God intends to free from Egyptian slavery. And it was in the desert that he does this. Let me tell you something about deserts is that deserts, they are symbolic dominions whose apparent emptiness feeds the search for spirituality and enlightenment. Let me say it again. Deserts are the symbolic dominions whose apparent emptiness feeds the search for spirituality and enlightenment. I went to a a, a HBCU called Florida A&M. Let me tell you, it was a great time and when you walked out your dorm room if you went to the left down to the cafeteria on fried chicken Wednesday they had some of the best fried chicken that you could ever ask for and that turned into almost like a social gathering and a party in the cafeteria if you went on Friday to the set you would hear DJ Loose Kid turning the baddest tunes and all the Greek organizations strolling and the AKAs and the alphas they were strolling and that was at Florida A&M from there I went down to Miami Florida to play with the Miami Dolphins and trust me There was a lot that was going on in Miami, Florida with all the entertainment in the beaches. From there, I went back to Florida A&M to get my master's degree. But God said, there's something that I have to do with you. There's something that I called you to do. And what he did was he took me from Miami, Florida and from uh, Florida A&M and he placed me in Canton, Ohio. And he said, I'm going to give you an opportunity. You might be by yourself. You might not have all the friends around you, but you're going to be by yourself and I'm going to be with you and I'm going to work on you. Has anybody ever felt like they've been in a desert place where they've been by themselves? And sometimes God, he has to place you in isolation. He has to take you to a place in life where he can reach you, where he can get your attention, a place where you are focused, not always a physical desert, but sometimes Sometimes an emotional and a spiritual desert. Sometimes God has to remove the friends and the homeboys from your life. Sometimes he has to separate you from your loved ones or the people that you love and the people that you thought you loved so that he can get your attention. He has to take you through some hard times. It might hurt a little bit, but it, it, it's going to be worth it. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, but in the desert, We are focused on God and focused on God alone. There are miraculous things that occur in the desert. Transformation is birthed in the desert. Leaders are called in the desert. In that quiet and barren place, God speaks and we hear him the clearest. It might be tough, but there is significance in the desert. Jesus, he was led into the desert before he was called to do what what God had sent him to do. He was led into the desert and he was tempted. God was preparing Moses for greater, preparing Moses for leadership. As a nomad, Moses learned the ways of the people and about the life in the desert. He was being prepared. 
you might be in that desert place, but I encourage you to stay in that desert because breakthrough is coming in that desert. You're right on the other side of being what God has called you to be in that desert. So stay in that desert. Don't get weary in the desert. Trust the process. Don't rush it, but trust the process. Somebody say trust the process. Trust the process. Stay in that desert. Stay in that desert place. There, there, there's life in the desert. God is getting ready to do something great in that desert place in your life. My second point. My second point in understanding why does God say I am. So he, 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 he called Moses. He spoke to Moses in the desert and he told him something specifically. And what he said was I am. He said I am. Why does God say I am? God's consistency over generations. God's consistency over generations. Keep that in mind. God's consistency over generations. Moses continues this conversation with God. Moses responds with the question that he may be asked in the heat of the moment by the Israelites. Moses, he, he, he's, he's thinking about this. He's processing this. And in Exodus 3.13, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God, just help me out here. What do I tell them, God? What do I tell them? He says, then what shall I tell them? Moses is running these calculations in his head and he is running through different scenarios and needing some clarity. And God says, tell them that I am sent you. Why does God say I am? Why does he say I am? I am is derived from a form of the Hebrew name of God used in the Bible, Yahweh. God has no shortage of names, but he specific, he's chose a specific name. He is called by almost 1,000 different names in the Bible. But one of these names stands alone. This is the name by which God has chosen to be remembered throughout all generations. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generations to generations. Catch this. Consistency over generations. Here God reminds us of his covenant promises to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob over generations. To Abraham in Genesis 12, he said, keep that in mind. Consistency over generations. I need you to keep that in mind. In Genesis 12, he said, the Lord has said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land. I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Consistency over generations. Keep that in mind. In Genesis 26, 2 through 5, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. It's starting to sound a little bit familiar. For to you and your descendants, I will give all the lands and will conform the oath I swore to your father, Abraham. It's starting to sound real familiar. I will make your descendants descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all the lands and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him keeping my commandments my degrees and my instructions consistency over generations the start is going to sound real familiar Genesis 28 13 through 15 there above it stood the Lord and he said I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac Isaac, consistency over generations. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the east, to the e to the west, to the north, and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. It sounds real familiar. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God promised your grandmother and your great-grandfather. He promised Alice Sharp. He promised Papa Grigsby and Mama Grigsby. He promised Mama Darby what he is going to do in your life. And right now, he is going to use you to fulfill those promises. And he said, I will not leave you until I have done what I promised. And little do you know that God is using you right now to do what he has 
promise your grandmother and your grandfather, your mama and your papa generations ago. And here Moses is, he's being called to fulfill promises that God promised generations ago to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, this is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. He said, I am. What does I am mean? That's the name that God chose to be referenced from generation to generation. This is important. I, I, I never knew how important that water was to, the, to them pastors until now. But what was one thing in my daddy's generation is a new thing in my daughter's generation. We live in a world of insta and immediate where things are changing every day. Morals are changing, values are changing, unnormal is becoming the normal, laws are changing, and there is nothing that is consistent over the course of time. But oh, let me tell you, one thing that is consistent from generation to generation. Does anybody know where I'm going with this? The same God that appeared to Abraham was the same God that appeared to Isaac and the same God that promised Jacob. The God that appeared to Moses is the same God who lives within us today. The same God who did it then, he can do it now. The same God who freed the people in Egypt can free our people today. The same God who provided a lamb in the bush for Abraham can make a way in 2020. The God who called Moses to do great things is calling you to do great things. The same God who took Adam and breathed life into him and gave him dominion over a kingdom is breathing life into you and giving you rule over your kingdom. The same God who placed Joseph in high places is elevating you within your job and within your career. He is unchanging. Hebrew 13, 8 says, God is the same yesterday and today and forever. There you go. You know the word. Hebrew 13, 8. He's unchanging. He's unchanging. He said, tell them that I am sent you. You have to understand who God is so you can know who you are. This is, my, this is my third point here. You have to understand who God is so you can know who you are. The interesting phenomenon here is that Moses responds in objection to who he is, but not in understanding of who God is. Do you know who I am? If you're taking notes, I will write this down because this is an important point. We can't understand our full ability and capacity until we know who God is. I'm say it again. We can't understand our full ability and capacity until we know who God is. We can't understand our full ability and capacity until we know who God is. When you find out who God is, then you find out and know who you are. Yeah, when you find out, that's, that's it right there, my brother. For the first 23 years of my life, I thought that I was a football player. That's what I thought. I thought, that I, was, I thought that I was a football player. That was an identity that had just came to me from, from so many years being a football player. My recognition throughout everywhere I went from high school, college, and beyond, I was recognized for my abilities as an athlete. I thought football had identified me, but when I got released from the Miami Dolphins, I started to learn more about myself and even more about who God was. He had a plan greater for me than the plan I thought I had for myself. And as I left football, I started to open my eyes and he started to reveal himself. And God said, I have a plan greater for you than you could imagine. And here I am. So Moses, Moses, he made excuses before he felt inadequate for the job God had asked him to do. Have you been going back and forth with yourself and, and, and with God saying, do you really want me to start this business? Do you really want me to start this hair salon? Do you really want me to start this nonprofit organization that's going to help kids in my city? See, Moses, he was inadequate by himself, but God wasn't asking Moses to work alone. God was calling Moses to work through him. And God won't put more on us than we can bear, nor will he call us to do something that we don't have the ability to complete. 
He will give us the resources because without God, Moses was a runaway and a murderer. But with God, Moses changed nations. With God, Moses delivered plagues. With God, Moses parted the Red Sea because with God, anything is possible. Philippians 4.13, you all know the word. Philippians 4.13, what's it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There you go. We, knew, we know the word. We grew up in church. So here, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. So come on, Jayla, I might need you here. If you ever have been wondering who God is, you can look back through the word and see in Revelations 22:13 that he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. I told you, I am, I am, I am. In John 6, 35, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry, and whoever believes in me will never grow weary. In John 15, 1 through 5, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. If you're ever wondering who God is, in John 8, 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have eternal life. In John 10, 9, he said, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. In John 10, he said, I am the good shepherd. The, God, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. If you're ever wondering who God is, in John 11, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will never will live even though they die, they will live. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered, if you're ever wondering who God is, in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said, I am. He said, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Yes, yes, he said, I am. So we don't know who we are until we know who God is. We don't know who we are until God is. You can't be walking around here in the world thinking that you know who you are and you're not connected to God. We don't know who we are until God is. What does the Bible say about my identity is that we are woven into the tapestry of all he has created. Being made in his image explains our innate desire for something more than ourselves. We were built to seek and to live in communion with him and are called to fulfill our unique purpose. All knowing, just, and perfect, his will for our lives reflects the loving father that he is. The pain and consequential suffering of this world, they're unavoidable. You can't get around it. They're unavoidable. But it never trumps God's desire and ability to work all things out for our good. We know who we are. We, when we know who God is, then we know who we are. And we can't fully understand who we are until we know and understand who God is. When we know that God is the I am, when we know who the ultimate I am is, then we can tell ourselves that I am a child of God. When we know who the ultimate I am is, and we know that our help comes from the Lord, then we can tell ourselves that I am smart and intelligent. We got to know who the ultimate I am is. When we know who the I am is, then we can tell ourselves that I am significant. When we know who the ultimate I am is, then we can say, I may have lost some battles, but I am more than a conqueror. When we know who the ultimate I am is, then we can tell ourselves that I am I am a winner. I am who God says I am. When we know who the ultimate I am is, then we can know that I am everything and more through Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. So let me ask you this morning, saints. So who am I in Christ Jesus? I confess that I have sinned, and yes, I've fallen short of the glory of God. But I am an awesome spirit being made in his image and saved by his grace. Come on, somebody. We're almost done. Totally loved by God in spite of my performance. Because my performance is not good enough. In spite of my performance, I'm loved by him. Completely forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ who died for me. 
I am daily empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives in me. Absolutely nothing can touch my life apart from God's permission. I am a child of the eternal King, welcomed into his presence at any time and for any reason. I am heaven bound and joy filled. I am a, his special treasure and he knows my name. I need to talk to some folk this morning that knows who the Lord is. Remember when I started out, I said, do you know who I am? Does anybody know the Lord this morning? Has anybody walked with him and talked with him? Has he brought you through even when you didn't think you were going to come through? Has he been a bridge over troubled waters? Does anybody know the Lord this morning? Has he been a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer? Does anybody know who he is? If you know the Lord and you experienced him, you would be praising him right now because he's been a doctor in a sick room. He's been a lawyer in a court room does anybody know the Lord this morning he's been a way maker and he's been a provider does anybody know the Lord this morning does anybody know that he will give us eternal life because some 2,000 years ago he went to a hill called Calvary he carried your sins and he carried mine he came to save the world he was perfect and unblemished does anybody know the Lord this morning they stretched him high and they they stretched him and they hung him and he had nails in his hand and he had nails in his feet he was pierced for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and he hung his head and he died but early one Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands he stayed in the grave for three days he stayed in the grave all day Friday and all Friday night he stayed in the grave all day Saturday and all Saturday night if you knew the Lord you get excited because we know that early one Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands I need you to stay socially distanced but I need you to turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor do you know the Lord this morning has he been and done anything for you do you know the Lord have you tried him and ain't he all right won't he do it somebody say yes yes the Lord is a way maker the Lord will do it. He took Moses and did things through him that he didn't know he could do. He stretched him and he used him. And through the desert, he took Moses and he freed the people. Do you know him? Have you tried him? And ain't he all right? God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> 